these, of course, these are preseason records. Hard to compare, really, because you don't know, uh, as you mentioned, the cupcake schedule. Some teams may have played, but Indiana and Michigan State both faring well with one uh, loss each. Yeah, you can see the Big Ten has done pretty well throughout. You can see they've got a lot more wins than losses, obviously. But uh, really meaningless at this point in time as we get into the Big Ten season. Uh, you know, tonight we'll find out. Now look at Indiana. They're up at 14 games. Uh, Purdue's only played 10. Wisconsin and Penn State only 9. What would be the difference in the uh, number of games? Well, obviously the big difference there is that Indiana, they were in the NIT tournament. If you win, you continue on. It's the Michigan State Spartans at 7-1 and one, visiting the Indiana Hoosiers at 13-1. and one. Hello, everybody. John Laskowski and Ted Kitchell. Indiana off to a great start, led by Andre Patterson. And Andre Patterson's going to have to lead them into the Big Ten. They're going to have to also get some excellent play from Neil Reed, Guyton, and Jason Collier inside. Time now for the Sunoco Fueling Factor. And for Indiana, field goal percentage is most important. You've got to get good shots and knock them down. But remember, Michigan State, its last 29 opponents, nobody has shot 50%. And rebounding, very important for Indiana. They're going to have to control the board. You control the board, you also control Michigan State's fast break. Coquelin and Sunoco are teaming up to improve your drive dollar by dollar, mile by mile. And now for the Michigan State perspective on tonight's game, let's go to Tim Stout and Greg Kelzer. Thank you, John. Good evening, everybody. Michigan State, like Indiana, comes in red hot tonight. The Spartans have won four in a row. The big question, Greg, for Michigan State fans is how good is the competition compared to what they're going to play tonight? Well, this is going to be the stiffest tough to date. Number one, Michigan State, if they're going to be successful here, they cannot turn it over. They got to get their break going, but they got to really be smart when the break is not there. Execute your half-court offense and have confidence in it. Spartans have shot 52% from the field the last three games. If they can do that tonight, which is tough, they think they got a chance. Well, they've got to have good ball movement. They've got to have good people movement, and they've got to set solid screens to get people open. You do that, you'll get open shots against the Indiana Hoosiers. It's going to be a great Big Ten opener tonight. Michigan State and Indiana will come back with the starting lineups of the opening tip from the Assembly Hall in Bloomington in just a moment. State, let's take a look at the Papa John starting lineups. For Michigan State, you can see Weathers, their leading scorer, just coming off an MVP type performance in their classic. The other guard, only a freshman, Mateen Cleaves. Jason Klein at the, at the other guard, along with Antonio Smith and John Garavaglia at the forward. For Indiana, Andre Patterson leads them into Big Ten play, averaging almost 18 points a game. You can see what he did last year against Michigan State. At the guards, Neil Reed and A.J. Guyton. Harris Mujuzinovic gets his second start in a row. And at the center, you got Jason Collier. Those are the Papa John's starting lineups. Papa John's Pizza, better ingredients and better pizza. We'll be back with a tip-off in tonight's Big Ten opener after this. Both teams have been introduced. This is a good rebounding team. Michigan State, a seven per game rebound average over their opponent. They shoot 49% as a team, and they hold their opponent just a 38% shoot. Well, it's, it's been a, in the last seven years, five out of the seven years in Big Ten play, Michigan State has been the best be defensive team in the Big Ten. Thought it was interesting last year in 18 Big Ten games, 15 times they held their opponent to 60 or less points. I mean, folks, we're in the 90s, and that usually doesn't happen. Uh, I mean, it used to happen in the, in the early 70s and the 70s where people didn't score a lot of points. But this Michigan State team, they play good, hard defense, and they got some tremendous athletes out there. Tom Izzo in his second year, a 23-17 and 17 record. Bob Knight, his 26th year at Indiana. There's his record against the Spartans. Indiana leads the overall series, and they split last year, each team winning at home. Andre Patterson will jump for Indiana. John Garavaglia for Michigan State. And we are underway. Garavaglia comes away with a tap. And this is Mateen Cleaves, 6'2 freshman, very highly touted. High school recruit chose Michigan State over several other big name schools. And he gets the start tonight. Here's Klein. Harris on him. Jump shot by Garavaglia and Patterson with the board. See, they want to get the ball into Garavaglia as much as they can. He's a little quicker than Collier. Probably try to take one dribble to the basket, maybe get to the hole if at all possible. They start out in a man-to-man. -man. Collier's up high. Patterson trying to get position inside. The ball stripped from Collier. And Harris comes away with it. And again, Stoll, you can see the intensity increased already just in the first 
minute of play. Shot clock down to down under 10 already. And Indiana has to realize that. Patterson to the hoop. Hangs in the air and misses. Really like to see him take that underneath the basket, roll it up. Decided to go up strong on this side. Klein's a good set shooter. Like so set for shoot. three, but misses. And Smith pulled the rebound down. Harris, Mouye Zinovich. Well, the one thing in the scouting report they, they talked about with Smith is you must keep him off the board. He doesn't look that big body, but he's very, very strong, very powerful, and he goes to the board every time. I think you have to get him blocked out early, and that makes him quit going. Harris picks up his first foul. Cleves is the guy that's going to handle the ball for them a majority of the time. He's a guy that Indiana wants to make him give the ball up. He's a guy that will create a lot of problems, get inside, penetrate, shoot, or dish off. Caravaglia's second shot is short as well. Good block out by Patterson. Here comes Guyton. Indiana would like to get the ball off the board and get up as quickly as possible as Collier pops the shot right there. Patterson in for the layup on the rebound. Excellent hands by Patterson. A good, strong move inside. You don't like to see the big man put it down on the floor, but it was a good, strong dribble. Got him to the bucket. First two of the Big Ten season. Flying outside. Michigan State doesn't take long to get that shot away. And Indiana brings it up. Indiana's going to have to do a better job getting on five. Harris, the jumper, is off. That ball hits the floor. And because of good block out, Michigan State comes away. Outside jumper is way wet. Weathers. Air ball. And that foul is going to go against the Spartans on flying. He pushed as Harris had position. Well, I mean, everybody's kind of jumping to go up for the ball, and it never hits the rim, and uh, he ended up leaning into Harris a little bit. On this end of the floor, Indiana going to have to get the ball. I mean, they did a nice job of getting it inside. Harris needs to realize, unless he's got a layup, that is not the shot they want. A 10-footer by Harris Mlyuzinovich is not what Coach Knight's looking for. Here comes Reed. Two to nothing, Indiana leads it. Harris again inside, same move, but this time he passes. And it opens up things when he does that. It does, A.J. Guyton about 12 feet for a jumper. I mean, now if he can get to the basket and get all the way to the hole or get a layup, then Indiana wants him obviously to take it. But the 10-footer is just not a very good shot for him. Travel called on Garavaglia. And we're expecting a nice defensive matchup and that's what we've seen early four to nothing 17 31 left first half here's michigan state's first substitution morris peterson 6-6 freshman checks in you can see michigan state though coach Izzo really want to take it inside and take advantage of garavaglia's athleticism against against collier and indiana wants to go inside and use his height collier on the jump shot he turned to that right shoulder one of the few times he's been able to turn, and here they come. This is what they do best right there. You can see they get it in bounds, and if you fall asleep, if you don't get back in conversion, they are going to burn you. And they did right there. They Peterson did. down quickly. Muye Zinovich now has two early fouls, and that brings Charlie Miller up. The concept here, Ted, that Izzo will substitute a lot to keep guys fresh, and that might have been where it paid off. Peterson beats everybody down the floor. Well, I know that Coach Knight has worked all week because ever since they had snow, they've run the same type of team as Charlie Miller comes in for Harris Mlyuzinovich. You see him go to the sidelines. But the one thing, you have got to get back defensively. I guarantee Coach has worked all week on it, and that is the one most important point is either give, make that point guard give the ball up, or you've got to get back and turn your head. You can't lose sight of the ball because they'll throw it right by your ear. Michigan State with four players from Flint, Michigan. McKean Cleves played at Northern. Peterson is also a freshman who played in Flint High School ball last year. Misses on that free throw, six to one. Indiana leads it. As we approach 17 minutes left, first half. Good shot fake by Neil Reed. Collier has the board, one dribble. Jump hook is off. There they go, they sprint up the floor, and if you don't pick them up, they got a little 15-footer. That's exactly what happened. Mateen Cleese gets his first bucket. You get used to going back, you know, kind of in the shell, and then coming out defensively, but if you're guarding Mateen Cleves, you can't do that. Great, great inside pass right there by Andre Patterson to Collier. You can see Peterson comes in, kind of slaps him, and Jason will get two. Indiana looking a little sharper on offense here. Let's take a look at Michigan State's last look at possession. It, look at them run by you. So Indiana 
and goes back to make sure nobody gets a layup, but then nobody picks up the point guard. A.J. Guyton going to have to find that man. Mateen Cleaves is a guy that can dribble, he can penetrate, and he can obviously hit the 15-footer as he did right there. Peterson picks up his first foul, and Collier hits his first free throw. 7-3 now, Indiana. And the lead now 5 at 8-3. See, he gets that ball and he is looking up the floor. Garavaglia goes right in. Rebound is long to Patterson. Good job by Patterson to grab the ball and not try to continue up the floor on the dribble. He grabs the ball. That's one more possession for Indiana. Now look at Andy. They're really spreading them out, getting them very high, trying to get some screens inside. Patterson on top, one dribble. Here's Miller. A.J. Guyton really looking to pass right here. Charlie Miller, I don't think they want in there posting. Going to dribble it back out. There's still five seconds on the shot clock. That's a good shot. Collier off. Miller Trey tries to track it down, and it goes out of bounds off Miller, and it'll be Michigan State ball. Indiana leads it 8-3. to three. You're watching Big Ten basketball on Creative Sports. Other pads, but the face is familiar, Ted. That's Jim Harbaugh. Indianapolis Colts quarterback. Of course, he, he has a Michigan background at the Wolverines. He looks more comfortable than the last time I saw him on TV. Now, you he's, know? he's sitting behind yeah. the Michigan State bench, though. That, uh, the last that time I saw him me. on TV, he was, having a, he was having a tough day. But he is a great competitor and a wonderful human being. And there's your field goals tonight. We knew it'd be tough. Michigan State really struggling at just one of seven. Well, I think Michigan State should feel fortunate right now. Indiana has gotten some excellent shots and just not knocking them down right now. Inside, tough jumper that time by Smith off, but the rebound, Garavaglia lays it in. Jason Collier got caught way too far underneath the basket. Trying to rebound that basketball against big, strong people. You get one hand on it, you're not gonna get the job done. Indiana continues to try to spread and use the two-man game inside. You got to get it to Patterson. He was open right there. They pop open. You got to hit great pass inside. Shot was blocked. Patterson stays with it, and this time it's fouled by Garbaglia. They went up to try to dunk the basketball. Michigan State. They got, they got great athletes, and they responded very quickly to that. You take a look at it. It's a great pass inside. Very quick pass by Collier. You can see he goes up. He really didn't gather himself, he didn't get squared away, and then he's gonna get slapped right here on the wrist. You can see Garavaglia just slaps him across the arm, he'll get two. See the players a little more cautious when they get that ball inside. It's not an automatic jump up and just stuff at home. Well, and the, and the thing that the coach looks at right there is he feels like Indiana really had an opportunity for maybe, uh, you know, two points and maybe even three-point play right there. And uh, if he makes this, they luckily will get away with one. So they had a chance at three, and they got none. And a foul inside. Charlie Miller was fighting for that rebound, and he's going to uh, come away with it. Foul on Morris Peterson, his second. So Indiana has possession. Okay, they're in the they're in a 3-2 zone. And it's a very, very athletic zone. I mean, you're gonna have to move the ball, use a lot of shot fakes, and they're gonna get their hands on it, they're gonna knock it away, and when the shots become available, you better have your feet set and ready to shoot. Anybody that has watched Michigan State remembers they won a national championship playing the same type of zone, and when you had Magic Johnson, Greg Kelser, Ron Charles playing it. It was almost impossible to find a good shot. Seven to shoot. Here's Collier. Good ball movement there. Inside, back out, and a rebound. Patterson missed the three-pointer. Collier inside. Jump hook is in. Off the ball. I know that's what Indiana wanted to do against the zone, and here it comes. Good job by Collier of getting back. He'd like to have got his hands on that ball and saved it. But Indiana wants to get in the middle, and twice that time they got a good shot because they got the ball in the middle, and then they got a bucket because of it. Take a look at it, just a catch. Good job, he didn't take any time. He knew it was there, good jump hook. That, that little jump hook's gonna score him a lot of points in Indiana. Six points now for Collier. A nice debut to his Big Ten career. Michigan State out of bounds, underneath their basket. Well, you want to keep the ball right there. When they bring it in in the corner, you'd really like to keep it there. Coach doesn't like to get it out where they can reverse it. Here's three, Thomas Kelly, 6'2", junior, now in the lineup. 
same type of guy as Cleves, except probably not as good a scorer as Cleves, but maybe a little faster and more of a ball handler as far as pushing the ball up the floor. So Kelly, very much a part of their offense and getting the ball where it needs to be, but not a big scorer. Drives to the hoop and dishes this time, saved by Miller, tipped back, and that's good as Kelly comes up with a loose ball, lays it in. Yeah, that was, that was a tough play. Charlie Miller tried to save it. He just happened to come in from out of bounds. 10 to 7, Indiana by 3. Guyton in the corner, lost his dribble. Patterson with a move. Oh, Collier good. Not down low. Good high low move by the big man. You talked about what does 14 games into the season mean. I think it means the little things like that. You got guys that are starting to feel much more comfortable working together. They're starting to do things as a team, and you can see it was a good, good dribble right there, good shot fake by Collier, and an excellent feed into Andre Patterson. 12-7, Indiana. Polonowski, 35 in the lineup. He's a senior. Here's He'll Kelly. Dish. He's going to drive and dish. Very seldom is he going to take it up inside. Three seconds. Three seconds called inside. Second turnover of Michigan State. Our officials, Ed Hightower, Rick Hartzell, and that was Burl Sell with that call. Take a look at the two-man game right now. Watch Collier. He's going to receive the ball. Gets it right here. He can either shoot it, shot fake, boom. Doesn't, doesn't run over anybody. Early in the year, he tried to take that to the basket and run over somebody. Good, good sharp dribble, good pass. Good two points for Indiana. That's a bad pass. Neil Reed, he was expecting the defense to do something different, and they didn't. They go inside. Polonowski just off. But Klein comes down with it. Quick move by Klein. It does go back to Kelly, and he's off on the shot. Foul inside. Going to go on Polonowski, fighting for the board. 6'9", senior. He's a big body inside. He doesn't have the, the big-looking muscles, but he's big and strong inside, and Andre Patterson's going to have to do a better job offensively of not letting Polonowski push him off that block. Andre's getting the ball down there. Polonowski kind of kind of rooting him out of there. A little full-court press by Michigan State. Collier's jump hook goes in and around and down. And eight points now for Collier. Good things happening for Jason Collier because he's moving without the ball. He's working very hard. He's getting open. One or two really quick, quick steps. He gets open, and then he's doing something with it once he catches the basketball. Kelly on the dribble. Inside. DeJuan Wiley in the game, number 55. Indiana turned and went to the ball. Rather than turning and finding your man, blocking out, then going to the basketball, Indiana just turned and went to the basketball. Tipped in by Jason Klein. Uh, whistle away from the ball. That foul is going to go on Thomas Kelly. And we've got timeout. Indiana leads it by five. You're watching Big Ten basketball on Creative Sports. Collier already with eight points early in the game. Patterson four. Rebounds, you can see Patterson's been dominating with six, six rebounds. Been on the board very, very hard as he was the other evening against Valpo. But Collier and Patterson have been the majority of the offense, and that's the type of shot that Indiana likes, and especially Coach Knight likes. Michael Lewis and Richard Mandeville both check in at that last timeout. They'll be in a zone in the out-of-bounds. You can see they're in the 3-2 zone, so they cover a lot of the wings. The places will be open, be down low, right there where Patterson steps in. That'll be open at times, and the corners will be open. But you can see, once they get the ball to the corners, they'll trap you if you don't watch it. But that's the shot that's going to be available. Mandeville took it, missed that one. Patterson slaps that one away. Weathers back in the game. Anthony Mole comes out. The idea to substitute, uh, you wear the opponent down toward the end of the game and try to take advantage. And if you're behind, catch back up. We'll see if that works for Michigan State. They're down five right now. 11 minutes left, first half. Cleaves a guy that very seldom is just going to catch it and put it up, as you can see. Great knock away right there by Andre Patterson. Doing an excellent job of helping out. Three turnovers for Michigan State. Indiana 
running the offense. Patterson posts up. Boy, he looked like he was open. Oh, great pass by Mandeville. Mandeville got it to him inside, but a travel is called on Andre before he gets the shot away. Not to the pleasure of this crowd. Fisher was obviously watching his feet down low. That's his job. You take a look at it. Now watch his feet down low. It's an excellent pass by Mandeville. Well, it didn't look like he moved the right foot. The left one moved, but he came down with both of them. It didn't look like there was any movement, but hard to tell. Cleves coming off that pick, fires one off. And a hold, Mandeville used that left arm to move Wiley out of the way. Oh, yeah, Eddie Hightower oh, felt like Mandeville, Mandeville definitely had his hand on him. He, he said he had a hold of him, so I, uh, we couldn't see that, but uh, Mandeville definitely got called with the foul. Three team fouls on Indiana State, already over the bonus. Ray Weathers drives the baseline and gets that one to roll in. He wants to score quickly on you. Reed on the quick drive, and he's going to draw the foul. Wiley came over to help, and he picked that one up, so Indiana's at the line. It's really a good, smart play by Neil Reed because he knows when he takes off, there's no way he's going to get a shot off. But the defense is out of position. It's one more foul, and it puts Indiana at the one and one with, with uh, 10 minutes still left in the first half. Number five. been an excellent free throw shooting team they've been doing a nice job of getting there but also once they do get there they're shooting almost 74 percent which is excellent for a team jason kyer comes in for patterson so already uh, bob knight has uh, substituted for his two big guys collier and patterson trying to keep them fresh knowing the nature of uh, michigan state substitution pattern coach knows coach Izzo is going to try to run him up and down try to wear out his big men as you saw the big men running up and down as reed misses the this is the second Charlie Miller up and in good quick hands miller has made some big plays here early reed saw that pass coming and kicked it back out of bounds michael lewis got his foot on that one That's a big play right there by Charlie Miller. Those are the little types of things. I mean, he doesn't have to come down and be Dr. J. I mean, if he does little things like that, as you take a look at the assist, Indiana four to nothing. But if he'll just pick up rebounds, play defense, he can be a huge asset to this team. Caravaglia swings with that hook. Rebound out to Reed. Neil Reed heads up right there when the ball bounced out. He was able to pick it up. Just as big as some guy picking it off the floor, just as big as some guy going two feet above the rim and making it look like look good Collier open inside pass by Mandeville and Collier sweeps that left hook in Michigan State they're trying to play in front of Indiana right now and they're really getting burnt down down inside oh good cut by Garavaglia and it gets Michigan State a layup at the other end the coach is upset about the he's wanting traveling the the same the similar call that they called on Andre Patterson but more than anything Richard Mandeville just fell asleep Guard. Miller tries to post up. Charlie's got to get out of there. Once in a while, he's falling in love down inside. Neil Reed for three. It's off. And this Nick foul is going to go on Klein. He had position, but Miller was there, and Klein draws his second. Take a look last time down. You can see just an excellent pass. Great cut right there by Garvey. You can see the one little step. I don't think he traveled. I think he kept his right foot. And we'll be able to tell right here. Watch his right foot. Uh, it's an excellent job. That's, there's no travel right there, but it's the same call. And I don't think that Andre Patterson traveled on this end, although he got called for it. So Miller at the line. See his stats against the Spartans last year. And Miller has three points. Charlie Miller has come in tonight and added some, some big things for Indiana. I mean, if he can play defense, he's got... I think he's got about four rebounds already tonight as Indiana misses the second time on the one-and-one, one, the, the end of it. 20 to 13. 845 left. Good spinning move by Garavaglia. Just off. Mandeville pulls it down. Quickly out to Lewis. 
Indiana have been, been able to get inside very efficiently. I would think that they would go right back to that. You can see they're kind of down screen, and I'm surprised that they aren't in the high-low, which has been very good for them. Kyle, you're working on Smith down on the block. Lewis trying to get it to him. Ten to shoot. Important thing is Indiana. Boy, that's, that, that is a tough, tough call right there. They're going to call it on Mandeville on the back screen. They're going to call him on a blocking foul. And more than anything, it takes two points away from Indiana because Collier had excellent position and he had, a, he had a layup. Take a look away from the ball. Here comes Mandeville cutting through your screen. You can see he leans in is, the, is, is what they're going to get him for. And you can see behind him, Collier's laying the ball up for an easy two points. But you have to go set the screen, be stationary, let the man run off of you. But you can see how he leaned into him, and the referee's going to get him for that. Pressure by Lewis now. Cleves trying to find the opening. Goes baseline. And his jumper is good as he scores off the dribble. Four now for Cleves. See, Indiana's went to more of a 1-4 type offense. The two guys working down off the look, off the big guys inside. Not near as effective, but they're going to get a chance to shoot free throws here. As Peterson fouls Charlie Miller, he's holding on to him. So early, a lot of early fouls called against Michigan State. This will be their 10th. Team foul, 7.41 left in the half, and that's the third on Peterson. So he'll come out. David Thomas, 6'7 freshman, replaces Peterson. I think you'll see Coach change these offenses. Now Patterson's back in the game B with the three smaller guards. It'll be interesting to see if they just go back to the three-out, two-man game inside. Probably try to change that. That way Michigan State doesn't get a handle on exactly what they're trying to get done. Off the front rim, tipped around. Smith comes away with it. Outlet pass stolen by Lewis. He's going all the way. Offensive foul on Lewis as he tried to drive all the way to the basket. The crowd not happy with that call. Neither is Bob Knight. Makes an excellent steal, then he goes to the basket, decides to take it on into the basket. I don't know right there. It sure looks like that guy's leaning all which way. It doesn't look like he's just standing right there, and Michael Lewis runs over the top of him. Burl Sell obviously thought differently as he called a charge on Michael Lewis. Here come the Spartans. Another whistle away from the ball. This one's going to go on Ray Weathers. Both teams uh, struggling from the field, especially Michigan State. Now seven out of 20 from the field. Indiana's getting to the free throw line. They've missed a couple one and ones. They've missed the back end of a couple one and ones. See the team fouls, 10 to five. Guyton good on the free throw. His first points of the night. It's important when you do get into that one and one that you uh, you make them. He did. They rolled that one in. And now a seven-point Indiana lead. Smith open. That's not really the type of thing he's wanting to do. Smith likes to score down inside. You get him 15 feet about as far out as he likes to go. And Cleves will try to drive, penetrate, and then pass. He got it stolen now. Outlet to Lewis. Lay-in is good. Jason Collier led him perfect. You're exactly right. It's a great pickoff by Jason Collier. They forget to pick up Ray Weathers, and he makes you pay for it. But it was an excellent outlet pass. All Michael Lewis had to do was run as hard as he could and catch up to it. Guy cuts down quickly, then pulls it back out. Long pass by Lewis and Collier. This is that, and uh, fifth turnover for Indiana. Michael Lewis reading for Collier to go kind of slide out to the baseline. Instead, Jason made a good move, went and came up the lane, and uh, Michael just threw it straight out of bounds. So Indiana did not do. Indiana doing a much better job with that move right there. Garavaglia, a guy that can step out and hit the three, 
But early in the year, especially teams like Kentucky really hurt Indiana when they set that screen at the top of the key and play the two-man game. Lewis comes down with that ball. Again, a whistle away from the ball. And a foul called against Michigan State. 11, David Thomas trying to hold Charlie Miller. Coach Izzo, you see right here, you can see he's just got a hold of him. You can see he just keeps a hold of him. Eddie, Eddie Hightower says, hey, you got to turn around, guard the man. You just can't, you can't reach around and grab a hold of him. Polinowski and Kelly back in the lineup. You see Coach Izzo going over with Garabaya saying, you know, a lot of the, basically what he's telling me probably is he's got a lot of the offense set up around him to get the ball inside, to use his quickness and take advantage. As you see Charlie Miller hit the first free throw. Right now, they're not getting a lot of guard a lot out of Garvalli. Neil Reed in, and Mike Lewis comes out to a nice hand. Dan Dockage on the Indiana bench. Miller short, but got the roll. Robbie Eggers checks in for the first time, and Charlie Miller comes out. Charlie Miller did an outstanding job while he was in there. So Indiana now leads it by nine, their biggest lead of the game. Good pressure on the perimeter by the guards. Here's Collier. They're trying to defend on Smith and does a great job, gets the rebound. You can see Smith wants to back Collier in there, but I don't think he's used to playing against the big seven-footer. Collier, it's not there now. He needs to get rid of it. Go down, screen, and he can post himself. Three guys on one side, so Collier brings it over. Nice job by Guyton. Makes the guy play. Nothing there. Reed on the drive. That's a lot all the way in and gets a hoop. Great concentration by Neil Reed right there. It's very easy. To, to take a look at the guy coming to take the charge. He kept his eye on the basket, he able to finish. Nice job, you see Michigan State runs into one another. You can see Smith not able to get there in time. Excellent concentration by Neil Reed. Take another look, you can see he's still moving when Reed, he got there at the end, but he doesn't get there until Neil Reed has already left his feet. You have got to get there before the man commits to the basket. Off on the shot. But Michigan State steps over the line, so Reed gets another chance. That foul on Antonio Smith, number 13. So Reed has missed two free throws already tonight. Again, Neil Reed doing what he did the other night against Valparaiso, taking what the offense giving him. But most importantly, he's getting the ball where it needs to go as Michigan State takes a 20. 20 second timeout as Tom Izzo sees this lead come to 12 points and I like Indiana's intensity they have really done a nice job tonight's Big Ten Conference game is a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated and the use of the pictures descriptions or accounts of this broadcast without the express prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited this Indiana crowd is also pleased with what they've seen and a good crowd, although the students are not back yet. The alumni pet band is on hand and providing entertainment. Well, we got 526 left in the half. You see Indiana with a 15 to 6 run, but this is a Michigan State team with a lot of great athletes that can score points very quickly. We really want to stay on top of them. Patterson can't come away with it. A slap. And it's going to go against Indiana. Robbie Eggers. Eggers called for that foul. Indiana doing a better job tonight coming up with loose balls. We can see right there, Michigan State able to come up with that, picked up the foul. Next, next foul by Indiana, Michigan State will be shooting the one and one. Again, pressure outside. This is Kite now. Uh, Kelly. Now Reed on weather. Weathers very, very quick with that first step, and you can see he's wanting to score points. Boy, Smith went way up high for that rebound. Trapp nearly stolen, and Indiana recovers well. That was Patterson stuck that big mitt out there. Six turnovers now for Michigan State. You can see Michigan State's going to be very, very aggressive. If you really do a good job cutting 
working hard, they'll probably foul you. If you make them work for 25, 30 seconds, oh, what a great pass. Collier is just doing such a great job of seeing the floor. That's six now for Guyton. He got rid of that shot very quickly. And that's so important when you're a 6'1 or 6'2 guy, you don't want to have to go up against the big guys. He caught it in the air and was able to get it up on the basket from a pretty tough position. Kelly picks it up. Boy, not much there for Michigan State offensively. They average 83 points a game. Shot clock down to 10. I watch him, he'll look to dish. Oh, that's a tough one right there. As Kelly, Kelly fell down, and then he, Klein ends up with the rebound. Tom Izzo, a puzzled look. Indiana, 514. You're watching Big Ten Basketball on Creative Sports. It's Indiana by 14, 359 left, first half. And it's a Big Ten doubleheader this Saturday on Creative Sports. Beginning at noon, the Michigan State Spartans play host to the Golden Gophers. Kelly felt like he got slapped by Collier. We come back to action. Michigan State putting a little full court pressure on. Collier and Patterson working low. Indiana kind of running a little bit of a triangle inside. Patterson on the drive. All the way to the hoop and a foul. Garavaglia. As Collier went from calling for the ball to setting a pick as Patterson drove by. Well, it's tough when, when, when you, you're having to guard a guy like Andre Patterson. When he puts it on the floor two or three times and he makes you guard you, you may, or he makes it, you guard him, yet he, you know he can step out and hit the three. He's very, very difficult to guard, and then he's been passing the ball extremely well tonight also. Patterson hits the front of the rim. Indiana has not shot the ball very well from the free throw line. They're getting excellent shots in their offense, but uh, this is a big part of their offense, getting to the free throw line and hitting about 75% of those shots. Patterson now one of four on the night. The lead is 15 points. See, Michigan State, not a team that really wants to play in the half court. I mean, they'll, they'll do it, obviously, if they have to, but they're a team that wants to create a lot of problems. Good cut by Garavaglia. Great pass right there. They're going to call that traveling. That's the one they got Patterson on right there. The same same official got him, and Coach Knight, he was waiting on that call down there. Collier was flying through the air, but Garavaglia with the travel down low. Here's the press again. Guyton breaks it. Comes up quickly. Advantage. He they tried to it. dish that to Collier. Went out of bounds. Good job of Guyton. You take it. You, you have the advantage. Take it. Next time he'll come down, act like he's going to dish it, and he'll probably go straight up, take that little 10-footer off the glass. Same in that 3-2 zone now. Against the out-of-bounds. Look for Indiana. The, the openings again are in the corners, and then from up top, the people have to step in from behind. Boom, right there's Eggers. That's what they're looking for. Go to read the corner, back out. Still plenty of time. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Right there, stepping up in the middle. Step out. Gets Reed a three-pointer, and he nails it right in front of the Michigan State bench. Didn't look like Robbie Eggers did much. All he did was catch the ball where he's supposed to, get the ball where he needs to get it. Patterson slapped it away. Eggers nearly came away with it. You need people in the Indiana offense to do things like Robbie Eggers just did right there. That's very, very important. Mateen Cleaves back in the lineup. Michigan State having a very difficult time in the half-court offense. A lot of that goes back to Indiana doing an excellent job, shooting good shots, making a good percentage of their shots, and Michigan State not able to fast break. 1-4 now. Cleaves goes off the right all the way to the hoop. Good move. And he lays that one. A.J. Guyton should have went under that screen. He tried to go up over it. There's no help right there. When no, there's no help, you've got to go underneath. Cut that man off at the pass. Six now for Cleese. Reed on the drive. Anthony Mull draws the foul. So Indiana back at the free throw line. Personal foul, Michigan State. Number 10, Anthony There's Mull. Indiana's four Anthony freshmen. 40% of the points per game there. Combined. A very impressive stat. A lot of points. Almost 60% of the assists. 
Reed good on that free throw. Neil Reed is a very, very smart player as far as knowing. They're obviously, they're, they're trying to pick up the pace right here at the end of the half. They're really defending you. He takes one or two quick dribbles to the basket. He's able to get the guy to foul him. He goes to the line. He shoots two free throws. Klein stepped across the line, but Reed made it anyway. And the lead now, 18. Okay, now here's that same thing. Now see, this time he's able, they didn't set a really hard screen. He's able to get over the top of it. Klein side shot by Klein is good. Reed went down under the basket. See, early in the game, he added a couple open ones and he missed it, but you keep giving him the shot. Klein's gonna knock those down. Two minutes left, first half, Collier. And again, that jump hook, turning to the right shoulder. Boy, Robbie Edgers had his hand on it and almost knocked it away. Klein had the shot, decided to go one more in. Coach Knight talking to Eggers. Eggers almost made the steal, but if you don't make the steal and your guy scores on the other end, great, great shot by Collier inside, though. Indiana getting the ball into him. He's starting to get some confidence, people. This is the guy, see the turnovers, 11 to 5, but this is the guy that was the All-American high school player. He's starting to play. 11 first-half turnovers by Michigan State. They averaged 16 on the game. Patterson, baseline shot is in. Got to stop the ball. Seven for Patterson. Wild shot. Robbie Eggers there. Indiana tries to fast break. Want to be smart here. You got a minute 20. Guyton all the way. Patterson. Baseline jumper long. No one back. And Cleves has it. Behind his back. And out of bounds. Indiana will have it. Good hustle right there by Indiana. It's a basket Michigan State should have scored. A lot of it had to do with nothing other than Andre Patterson getting back. He really busted it. He got all the way back. Cleves trying to behind the back pass. You can see Patterson gets back. He's going to make him earn the two. It's a tough pass. Neil Reed gets on the floor. And then Michigan State just fumbles it right out of bounds. Anthony Moll can't come away with it. But what I was talking about on this end, you only have a minute left. You don't want to take a real quick shot because right there's what happens. Michigan State will take it off the board and up the floor they go. One minute left. Guy to the hoop. Gets caught under the basket. Collier ends up with it, though. Oh, he kicked it. That's a kick. Was kicked with the back of the calf and not called. A kick's a kick. I mean, if a guy intentionally reaches his own hand or foot out there, Collier's got it all alone. He won't miss that one. He doesn't. It's a jam. Robbie Eggers with a great step in on the defense. Robbie Eggers is coming here and giving the end up fabulous five minutes he has made some great passes he stepped in on defense just done everything that he needs to Collier has 14 first half points there's only about a second difference from the shot clock to the game clock 15 seconds left Michigan State holding for a last shot so the shot clock is still on but not really much going on there See, that time Guyton got really up over the screen. Looks like he traveled. They're going to let him get by with it, though. Leaves a good job. Reed, a long oh. shot. It's not going to go. But Indiana has come out ready to start this Big Ten season. And they hold a 43-23 first half lead. Bob Knight takes his team to the locker as Collier jams one down. You're watching Big Ten basketball on Creative Sports. When they go in the hole, you can see Indiana 58% from the field. Very poor shooting for Michigan State, only 34. The other important things here, look at the free throws. Indiana got to the line 18 times because of their moving around, hard to guard. Then rebounds, Indiana in front, which is a little bit of a surprise, but turnover is also a very big stat. Michigan State turning it over 12 times in the first half. Ten of those Michigan State rebounds offensive. Those are the Citizens Insurance halftime stats. Citizens Insurance Company is proud to be selected as the company of the year by the Independent Insurance Agents of Indiana. Look at this season high, 43 first half points. Indiana scored 43 against DePaul, but Michigan State a season low, 23 first half points. Excellent defense by Indiana. Indiana and Michigan State ready to start this second half. Turnovers always a big part of basketball games. Indiana's been concentrating on theirs. You see twice here. We're going to see a great step in right there. Jason Collier 
It's an easy dunk all set up by Robbie Eggers, but now on the other end, let's watch Jason Collier play a little D. Great step in right there. Then he throws the throws the carrot out in front of the rabbit. Let's watch the rabbit run. He able to run it down. That's a great, great step in and a great pass by Collier out there, making it easy for Michael Lewis. Five steals for Indiana. And the turnover advantage also favoring the Hoosiers, only six. And those turnovers lead to points, 16 by Indiana. And we are underway, second half from Bloomington. Indiana comes out in the same type of offense. You can see very much spread to start. First five minutes, obviously very important. You want to get back into your offense, get back into a flow. Same starting lineup for Indiana. Important thing, Indiana, making Michigan State play defense each and every time down the floor. Reed open. Good shot for Indiana, though. Line comes away with that one. Quickly down is Weathers. And that was McKean Cleves, number 12. He misses. Now Indiana down. Bad pass by A.J. Guyton. You just don't want to do those things early in the half, get the game moving at too fast a pace. Give them an easy bucket. Back inside to Garavaglia. And his jump hook is good, although Kelly did a nice job staying on his feet there and avoid the foul. Good shot right there by Garavaglia. That, in the first half, he missed about four of those. He gets a little confidence. All of a sudden, he's going to start making those. Patterson fakes right, goes left. And the layup is good. One dribble to the basket. The great bucket, but more importantly, watching Andre Patterson take control, step up when Indiana needs a big bucket is probably more important. Cleaves open. His jumper off. Reed fights for that rebound and slaps it away. So Reed not in any hurry this time of the half. He knows Indiana's got a 20-point lead. You just want to go up. Every time down, you want to make some time work off the clock, and you want to make them work defensively. That is not a trap. Collier came back with a right hand hook that time and called for the travel. They called him on that the other day on that on that same type of play on a when he swung into the hook shot. Inside pass. Goes down to Smith. He's double teamed. Leaves all the way in, and it's a good trap by Harris, but he knocked the ball out of bounds. See, take a look at Indiana's leading scorer, Jason Collier, with a big first half. Michigan State player got caught in no man's land down underneath the basket. Indiana trapped him. He had no place to go. Fine can shoot that one. Out of bounds play works. Collier tries to come away with that rebound. He does save it. Goes into the press row. And Garavaglia gets the layup as Indiana was not manned under the basket. Indiana not near as active this half offensively. They're not moving as sharply, making it much easier. He's got to get it to Collier right there. He's got the 6-7 man on him. He's got to take advantage of that. Jump shot off. Mugazinovic tries to get the board. Here's the fast break. Cleaves all the way. And he gets it to go. A quick shot release that time. Avoids the block. See, it doesn't take them long to score points when they run it up the floor like they do. Indiana looks tired down there. They're not moving sharply. They need somebody to really pick them up. The only basket they have got, they get a foul on Weathers right there. Holding on to Reed was a good drive by Andre Patterson. Two no now on Weathers. We've seen Reed draw a lot of those type of fouls. He comes around six. He gets open, and the opponent has to hold on. Great job by Cleves getting inside, uses his quickness. He just, you know, replayed the pass. See Indiana kind of wandering rather than really. He traveled there. He sure did. Hopped. Seventh turnover by Indiana. Probably got time for that hook. He was on the move. He's going to his right, that left-handed hook. But Mandeville comes out into the game now as Collier comes out. This is where Indiana really needs somebody to step up. you got to make a big defensive play, get a rebound, do something to get this team moving at a little quicker pace. There's two points here in the second half for Indiana. Reed nearly steals it. Right there in front of him. 
Weathers is a guy that really likes to go to his right, maybe cross over to come, come back and score. Weathers leans into that one, got the nice bank shot. And so Michigan State cuts the lead to 15. And you want a 15-point lead is not very big anymore. But the shot clock and the three-point shot go away very, very quickly. Mandeville on the baseline. Gotta get it out of there. There's nothing down there. You don't want the guards running away. Lead pass by Guyton and slips out of Mandeville's hands out of bounds. And that turnover, costly to Indiana. They still lead, though, by 14. State basket. You can see Weathers does a nice job getting advantage right here. Now, this is when Mandeville has to step out. You can see Mandeville worried about Garavaglia, but he's got to step out and help. Guyton got caught behind him. Michigan State's ball, and they only trail by 14. Plenty of time left. There's their run to start this second half as they gain confidence inside. Weathers tries to find a shot. Caravaglia misses, and Patterson comes away with it. Could have easily been Colton. Looked like Andre Patterson got his hand on the rim, even though he didn't touch the ball. Patterson's got to find some points for Indiana. Good pass. Dished it to Mandeville. Jumper off. Tries to keep it alive, and Mandeville's going to be called for a foul. I think that... It looked like the ball almost rolled off of Mandeville's hand when he shot the basketball. It was an excellent drive by Patterson. He put Mandeville in a wonderful position. All he had to do was hit about a five-footer. He wasn't able to get it down. Instead, he fouled. And that's his third. First of the second half for Indiana. Indiana, no communication right there. They got caught. Garavaglia beat him to the beat him to the jump right there and able to come down with the ball. Indiana looks very lax here in the second half. The first five minutes has not been something you want to put on the highlight film. Only two second half points still for Indiana. Everything they did in the first half had a lot of smoothness to it. Vanderbilt, good post up position right there. And Indiana throws it right out of bounds. I mean, you've got to go to the basketball. If you're going to post up, you just can't keep backing in. You've got to go get the basketball once they feed it to you. Peterson in for Michigan State. Collier in for Indiana. Let's take a look at Indiana's post. It'll be excellent post position right here. He's going to step in. But now he's leaning backwards. And I think a little of that. Garvelia had his arm around him a little bit, pulling him back. But still, you got to be able to have your weight up on the balls of your feet and be able to step to that basketball when they feed it into you. Garvelia getting the same type of shots he got in the first half. The only difference is he's making them. Charlie Miller draws this foul as Antonio Smith cut to the basket. Coach and I talking to Charlie Miller. Rather than reaching, you set yourself up in position where that guy can't make that cut and they'll end up just throwing the ball away. So this half all Michigan State to start. Peterson, left-handed jumper. That's a three. And you're exactly right, Ted. This lead down at nine. Full court pressure. Guyton breaks it. Two on one. Goes all the way. Air ball, but Charlie Miller there with the follow-up. The big bucket by Charlie Miller. Everybody else kind of gave up on it. He continued to hustle up the floor and able to pick up an easy two points. That's the second time tonight he's been able to pick up points like that. Here's inside. Oh, good pass. Garvalia had it blocked. Rebound by Smith and a foul. Good Collier on the slap right there. Collier tried to prevent that shot. Michigan State has really picked up the pace offensively. Indiana step slow right there. Charlie's a step slow. You can see Andre able to block it right here, but Indiana not able to get the loose ball. Then Collier's going to slap down. See how he slapped down? If he just go up straight up with the hand, he'd be fine, but he slapped down. It's a good call by the official. Indiana step slow both offensively and defensively. Charlie Miller needs to rotate from his position at the guard. When the forward comes to help, he's got to fill down low. And he is a half a step late, especially with this team, with Cleves and Kelly, guys that are real penetrators, who are really going to get in there. Everybody really has to be moving as a unit out there. Right now, we got one or two guys moving and one or two guys standing and watching. Here's Smith at the line. He's not a real 
confident shooter up there, but remember, Indiana had a 22-point lead, even though it was only 20 and a half. At one point, it was 22 points. And now it's down to 11. Smith gets his first point of the night. After their real goal, Michigan State coming out of the locker room was trying to get it into single digits by the 10-minute mark, and uh, they're getting close. Patterson baseline, that's a push. Gonna be hard for Antonio Smith to stay with Patterson. I mean, one thing that tells the difference in their movement offensively is Indiana at the 10 minute mark had already drawn seven fouls and was shooting the one and one in the first half. Now we've got seven minutes have gone by and they've only drawn two fouls. Just not much going on out there, not making Michigan State guard. Collier inside. Quick hook. Just off the front of the rim. Here they go. Polonowski. Mull is in the lineup. Throw it down deep and then look to throw it back out. And they keep that rebound. Peterson kept it alive. Kept the ball alive till Smith tapped it in. The lead now is eight points. Collier looks for Patterson. It is no pass there. In the first half, it was there. Now the pass is out to the corner. Michigan State's done a nice job. They've made adjustments at halftime. Coach Izzo, they've got somebody helping in on there, in on the post. Now you've got to throw it out to the corner. Indiana's going to have to hit that jump shot. Drive to the hoop. Weathers can't get it, but again, the follow. You can see all Smith does is goes down there, and if somebody misses the shot, he just stands underneath the basket. Coach Knight's seen enough of this. He wants a timeout. And Indiana takes the timeout. The lead now, six points. And it will be a full timeout. You're watching Big Ten Basketball on Creative Sports. So effectively for Indiana was the high low, but you can see now they've made adjustments. In the first half, Michigan State was playing in front. Indiana was throwing over the top. Now they're playing behind and helping in. It's not there. Take a look at Indiana on the board. You can see right here, Peterson able to keep it alive, and Smith just kind of stands underneath if somebody penetrates. This is the shot he's there as you take a look at him. Five points and 14 rebounds, and a number of those have been on the offensive end. Seven, so half his rebounds. Kept the ball alive for Michigan State. Patterson, jump shot in and out. Here they go. Mole down quickly, Patterson back. Mole fires. And good rebound by Polonowski, but Indiana makes the steal. Neil Reed needs to get involved in this offense right now. Neil Reed either needs to get a shot, needs to get a pass inside to somebody where somebody can score some points. Patterson much more aggressive offensively, misses that shot. That's a good shot, one that Indiana's looking for, but you can see he just took a little bit too long with the defense some time to gather their feet up under him. Carvalho takes that one outside. Oh, Patterson twisted that leg on the way down. And Peterson gets that layup. Patterson seems to be okay, though. Full court pressure. And it's a ball game now. Indiana by four. Two totally different teams here for Indiana tonight. We had a team that probably played maybe its best half of the year. Neil Reed, he can't come up with a three-pointer either. And a rebound for Michigan State. Michigan State not doing a lot different than they did in the first half, other than they're starting to make some shots, playing with a little bit more intensity. Collier goes down, and Mull is called for the push. Look at our scoring by half. Mull can't believe that call. 22nd half points for Michigan State, and they only got 23 in all first half. 20 to 4. Indiana worked, worked extremely hard getting up to that 20, 22 point lead in the first half. And then in about five minutes, you give it all back. That's why Coach talks about the first five minutes. You either let a team get back in it, and their confidence starts to really go. Or you play real hard, you do some good things, and all of a sudden they, they look up the scoreboard, they said, we've been working hard here, we're not getting anything accomplished, and the game's basically over. So Indiana's looking for offense. Here's Guyton all the way to the hoop, reverse layup. 
is in. The big bucket for Indiana. Just getting anything. Now you got to get back on defense. Peter for Guyton is a three-point shot. Morris Peterson. That's two he's buried. He's a guy that Michigan State people say he's not a guy that's going to guard anybody. He can he can shoot the basketball. Who does that remind you of? All right, don't say anything. Don't say it. Don't say it. Here we go. Reed. Louie Zinovich is there. Collier open, but decides not to take it. Reed all the way in, and a foul. Indiana's starting to become a little bit more active. They're starting to... Michigan State having to guard him a little bit here in the last two minutes. But there's not a lot to say in this first ten minutes of the second half. Well, since that timeout, though, Ted, they've come out and tried to look like they did in the first half. They almost came out of the locker room and looked as though they were tired. You take a look at it, Peterson. Oh, this is nothing but just a pull-up. you got to get back. Guyton takes the three. Here they come again. Michigan State has stepped up the tempo. With moves like that, Kelly goes coast to coast for the layup. And it's a one-point game. Their confidence is soaring. This is unbelievable. I cannot believe that they have given up a 20-point lead this quickly. It only took 10 minutes. Here's Reed to the hoop. Left-hander in. He had little English on that ball. And it's got the board. He's got to get back, though. Indiana's just kind of hanging their heads. And Michigan State is just running up the floor. 11 now for Reed. They missed on the shot. Here comes Guyton. He's looking for the hoop. Collier, layup, count it, and he was fouled. But A.J. Guyton really made that happen. Patterson makes the great pass, but Guyton, by moving all the way inside, he's making Michigan State really guard him. Take a look. You see Guyton comes out. Now they're all messed up. We got people, nobody guarding Collier inside. Peterson upset. He felt like he really didn't touch him. It didn't look like there was much of a foul there. Good ball movement by Indiana. That's his four. So he comes out. Michael Lewis in. So Indiana, a small lineup now. Reed, Guyton, and Lewis, three guards to go with Collier and Patterson. But Indiana is able to score points. The problem is they got to get back defensively. I mean, uh, yeah, they, they've caught Indiana, but the most important thing is they've scored about 26 points in 10 minutes here. 17 now for Collier. This crowd looking for some defense. Guyton's out front. On Kelly. Three-point shot, but a rebound. And it gets beat to the basketball. Andre Patterson's got to do a better job of rebounding that ball. Olinowski with that shot. So Michigan State now up, hustling Indiana on the board. Andre Patterson kind of has that tired look about him right now. Collier, good pass. Good pass, he's gonna get two. Neil Reed doing some good things down there on the baseline to get Collier two free throws. Polonowski signals to be taken out. Team Cleves comes in for Kelly. See, this is where this is going to be a big advantage for Michigan State, playing those 10, 11 different players, because they're going to keep running them in and out of Indiana. Indiana's big people already tired. Haven't got much production from their bench so far. And Michigan State back in the game. Collier, good on both free throws. So Indiana stretches the lead back to six, 8.35 left. Indiana has got to rebound the basketball. Michigan State has got a number of points here in the second half off, off missed shots. Good defense right, right there. In. And makes that steal. It's a poor pass by Michigan State, but it's a good job of Andre Patterson not giving up the position. Indiana's given it up so many times this year. Not there. Not there. There it is. There it is. Ah. That was the drive by Collier, and he gets the good roll. 21 points for Jason Collier. He's very offensive-minded, which there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, sometimes you got to learn to pass that ball out. Got Step the ball. in. Weathers, and a foul as Reed got beat to the basket. The 
Andre Patterson got to do a little bit better job and a quicker job of stepping in. Neil Reed got caught on his hip. Kelly and Garavaglia in. This group on the floor for Indiana, though, with Guyton, Reed, Lewis, the two big guys inside, Patterson and Collier, I feel like probably gets as good a movement as anybody offensively. Obviously, they give away some things on the defensive end. Reed and Lewis, you know, a little quickness and height inside. But offensively, they get some good movement. Well, Michigan State's gone to two big guys and three guards as well. They're all at the free throw line there. Kelly Weathers and Mateen Fleas. This is one of the teams we do match up better with as far as height and that they do not have a lot of very, very tall guards. Free throw by Weathers. The lead is seven by Indiana. Let's see if they can hold it. Their lead back up to seven points. They've done it from the offensive end. They became more aggressive, Michigan State. Peterson now on the bench with four fouls. There's some words from second-year coach Tom Izzo. He puts a full, full court pressure on here. Indiana brings it in. 28 substitutions is twice as many for Michigan State as Indiana. That's a new stat. I knew they kept score, but I didn't know they kept number of substitutions. Neil Reed just off with that left-hander. Well, good offense by Indiana. Neal's got to get that ball in the basket. He got bumped a little down low, but that's just one you got to get in there. It's tough on Guyton having to play Cleves up here, but he's very quick. Caravaglia in and out. Smith again, another offensive board. Somebody has got to get a body on him every time. You cannot let him rebound the basketball. If anybody else rebounds it, fine, but you cannot let him rebound the basketball. He's killing you. Five points is the lead now by Indiana. Patterson, Collier trying to get open inside. Good double team by Michigan State. Guyton all the way, leads right into it, got that layup. His quickness just scored Indiana too easy with Garvalli. Nobody gets back. Can't believe they didn't call a foul there on Garvalli. Came back. They're going to get one on Cleves, though. Hold Mike or A.J. Guyton. Let's take a look at Indiana. Somebody has got to get a body on Smith. Now watch Garvalli is going to take the shot. Watch, watch everybody. Smith, nobody gets a body on him. Everybody is watching the ball. Somebody has got to take it upon themselves so when that ball goes up on the board, they have got to find Smith and get a body on him. I think that's eight offensive rebounds, did you say, this half? That's more than I had in a career. Guyton hits that free throw. So Indiana now starting to stretch their lead. 6.28 left. A.J. Guyton has been one of the reasons he's really starting to do things, create, make them guard him. It's both free throws. Making it very tough. Indiana obviously having a lot more success when Michigan State has to come down. Makes please set up. That ball way up outside. Weathers. Here's the 1-4 offense, down screen for the guards. Kelly and Cleves, you got guys that can really handle the ball in there, and then Weathers, the guy coming off screens looking to score. Shot clock under 10. Gotta get a hand now. up, gotta get a hand up. Cleves fires, Garavaglia follows till he makes it. It's nothing but aggressiveness. They're just more aggressive right now than Indiana. They're going after the ball on the board. And because of it, they've gotten themselves back into a game that they should not be in at this point in time. 12 now for Garavaglia. Collier came out to help, and that was his man that got the rebound. Somebody needs to pick him up. See Michigan State starting to do some switching. Reed left-hander. Collier tipped it, but it was on the rim. Offensive goaltending. That is a big-time goal move by Neil Reed. Round the back, left hand, and Collier just couldn't keep his hand off of it. This ball's going to go in. It's going to hit the board, go in, boom, right there. 
good call by the official, no doubt about it. Holinowski back in. Almost every dead ball now. Michigan State has a player coming in. A little surprised they're taking out Smith, though, as they're going to the offensive end. He's been one guy, Indiana, not able to handle on the offensive board. I, Indiana needs to look up. They understand they're still up by seven. Play some good, solid defense. They've got to start rebounding the basketball. Michigan State's still not shooting that well, but they're rebounding. They'll give Smith a rest and bring it back in. Stolen by Patterson. Restolen by Weathers. And a three-pointer. It's a five-point turnaround. Indiana had a chance to maybe get two going the other way. They give it up. Michigan State gets three right there. That's five. Ten now for Weathers. Under five minutes. That basketball very precious in the late stages of the game. Patterson posts up. Lewis finds him. Here's the move. Jumper is out. And great job by Weathers as he keeps it inbound. High dribble by Cleves. Patterson on the slap. But Indiana not over the limit yet. Still 430 left in the game. You can see Coach Knight talking to his team. All comes down to who wants it worse right now. Michigan State, they've uh, done some great things to get back to this basketball game. They have. Weathers comes off in. the pick inside. Polonowski jumper off. Collier there for the ball. Why you have to step in there is you'd much rather have Polonowski taking the shot than you would Ray Weathers. So a good job by Indiana. This is when you really have to start making them. They're tired also. Patterson. Got to get that ball on the board. He didn't have much jump in that. Yep, they're tired legs. Well, I think you're right, Ted. Michigan State showing a little bit of tiredness as well. Yeah, they've got to be getting tired. I mean, it, it, it's not only tough physically coming back from a 20-point deficit, but mentally, because you keep looking up there, and you know you're doing good things, and all of a sudden it's back to four, and then it goes back to ten, and you think, oh, boy, you know, here we've worked so hard to get close, and then, then they get... So it, it's not only hard physically, but mentally it's really a draining process. But the mental side can keep you fresher. Patterson now 10 on the night. Collier has come out. Mujezinovic in. Collier just getting a rest. It's going to be a tough final 408. Long rebound, Michigan State. how tired A.J. Guyton is out there chasing people around all night. Inside, Garavaglia helped by Mujezinovic. He got right inside and hard to stop a guy right in front of the hoop. That jump hook is in and a foul on Patterson. Coach Knight very upset with Mujezinovic. They do not want Garavaglia being able to turn into the middle. Now watch, Mujezinovic, he's in perfect position. He's got to go down and trap, make him pick the ball up, then go back to your man. Instead, he acts like he's going down. There, he's in no man's land. He's not helping out. He's not guarding his man. He's not doing anything. And I'm sure that's what Coach Knight just told him on the sideline. The lead is three. Garavaglia can cut it to two. And he's at a big second half. He does. And timeout. It's a two-point ball game. You're watching Big Ten Basketball on Creative Sports. Showing it before, just taking a little time off the clock, making Indiana work to bring the ball up. Every possession big now. Patterson going to the right. See, that's just basically a clear out by Indiana. They're just giving Andre Patterson the ball, going to make somebody... Polonowski that time for Michigan State going to try to guard Patterson, but that's uh, that's almost an NBA type offense. Clear it out, make him guard one man. He was on the right side. He could use that right hand dribble to the baseline. Polonowski comes out, and it's still a one and one. That's 19 fouls though on Michigan State. So Indiana has two shots going in, and Indiana's committed 16 fouls. So Michigan State will still have one and one here for a while. Indiana has not shot very well from the free throw line. They got there a number of times in the first half. They're only 12 of 18. 
You like when you get tired, that's uh, harder to concentrate on those free throws. At this point in the year, though, there's no reason they should physically get tired. Obviously, you get tired running up and down, but it's more of a mental state. I mean, you, you go over, you sit down for a couple minutes. It, you, you, know, you, you should be in good, good enough shape where you can come back out and not really be affected by it. Indiana by four. Here comes Michigan State. Crowd is up looking for defense. Michigan State not, not really sure what they want to do. One thing they know they want to do is get a shot up on the board and let Smith rebound the basketball. That's what they've been doing all night. Now right here you can see Indiana makes them throw it back out. That's what Indiana's wanting to do. Neil Reed's got to get a hand in right there. Mull on the baseline for three in and out. And Garavaglia follows up. Here. No, it's going to go against Michigan State oh, as they call Antonio Smith for the foul. Collier was on the block out. That's three on Smith. i got to tell you the truth. I didn't really see it very well. I could see Collier going across the lane, and he was either blocking out or being pulled. I couldn't really tell. As Mole got the shot right down here in front of the Michigan State bench. And that was a big shot, a three-pointer. See, Reed goes out, gets a little pressure on him. You can see Collier... And right there, he, he grabbed him just a little bit. If Burl Sell saw that, he did grab him and spun him around a little bit. But other than that, it was just a pretty good block out, pretty good play all around by both players. So Collier goes to the line. Mole comes out. Indiana now shooting two the rest of the game. And Collier hits a big one there. 22 points for the freshman. Still 3.08 left in the game. And another one, both dead in the middle. Six-point lead by Indiana. Here comes the defense, but not before a 20-second timeout by Tom Izzo in Michigan State. He's got some words about the last foul called against Smith. And that may have been his main reason to call that 20-second he, he is complaining, feeling Collier had, had his hands wrapped around Smith, and all Smith was doing was trying to... To, to get those hands off of him. But you can bet the one thing they're going to set up is now they know when the ball goes low, Indiana is going to double. So when Indiana doubles, they have people spotting up outside, Klein being a main figure right there. Peterson also shot the ball very, very well, but he's not in the game right now. Time now for the Synergy Power Player of the Game, brought to you by Synergy, the power behind PSI Energy, and it is Jason Collier tonight. He's had a big night. You can see both points, rebounds, doing some good things, but there's still three minutes left in this game. Switch now as Reed and Guy. One advantage with the three small guys in there is that they can switch that out top. See if Michigan State brings one of the big guys out. Weathers going in. And he gets the layup that was Cleves on the pass, but Weathers cut right under the basket. If Michael Lewis fell down, Weathers cut right to the basket. Still a four-point game. Indiana in control. They're gonna have to handle the ball, take care of the ball, make good sharp cuts, and they'll probably get a chance to shoot free throws. Patterson comes left. He's out of the lane and does get rid of it to Lewis. Guyton behind the back, stops for a jumper. Yes, on the same time. He caught that ball and all in the same motion, put it behind his back. Indiana does not get back. Lead pass is tipped away. Lewis bounced it off of Smith standing out of bounds. And Indiana has possession. Michael Lewis with a great play. Take a look at Guyton. Now he catches it, puts it behind his back, all in the same motion. That's a big move. Two minutes to go, four-point game, and then knocks down the shot. Six-point Indiana lead here. Smart on the Hoosier. Smart play by Lewis on this, and he had no way of getting the basketball. He was falling out of bounds. He just took the ball and threw it right off Smith. Smith standing out of bounds. This is where the big guys can't get caught inside, knocking anybody over. Three seconds. Got to make them guard you right there. Ray Weathers having to guard Reed. That's the guy Indiana wants going to the line. Weathers with the foul, his third, and Reed does get two shots now at the line. 144 left. Hey, Indiana's picked up their intensity here in the later stage of this first half, second half, making some plays when they've needed them. 
Well, I think the, the youth shows a little bit in the team as, as Neil Reed misses his first free throw. But the one thing, as I watch this team come out in the second half, it's almost like they were waiting for Michigan State to come back. I think a real experienced team would have come out and been thinking about nothing except blowing them out in the first 10 minutes and getting this game over with. Reed hits one out of two. And Michigan State again wants the 22nd timeout. Set up a play offensively. As they need now to score quickly. 139 left and a seven point lead. And this is the type of uh, team that needs a rest for it. Remember how he used to come down and take that shot from way outside. You can go online with the Big Ten Conference and get stats and information on your favorite team and the Big Ten. The homepage is on the World Wide Web at www.bigten.org. But Michigan State still has plenty of firepower. I think everybody from Indiana remembers oh so well Sean Respert coming down <laughs> and spotting up from behind that three-point line. Let's see what they do offensively now. They've got a big lineup, Weathers and Cleves. Weathers is the guy they're going to look to shoot the basketball. Indiana, oh, they just threw it right out of bounds. Klein was expecting him to pop out, and he, and he curled around. 17 turnovers for State, and that has hurt them tonight, that pressure by Indiana. Now Indiana needs to set some really good, solid screens right here. You don't knock anybody over. You make good, solid pass. You handle the basketball and take care of it when you get it in your hands. Kelly in, Lewis down court. Two don't want to score. Don't want to score. Bring it back out. Waste time. That's more valuable than points at this point in time. Get it to Neil Reed. Get it to your best free throw shooters. I would have Guyton and Reed basically handle the ball the entire time. See Michigan State. Lewis on the drive, comes back out. Almost got spun around, lost his footing. Still 15 seconds up there on the shot clock. Guyton on a drive, stops. Uh, Another big hoop as he pulls up for that jumper. 18 for Guyton. You wonder what ball handling and quickness will do for you. That's the type of things that, can, that he can do that other guys for the Indiana team can't. And coach is going to yell at him right there. A.J., grab the basketball is what he's going to say to him. Before you try to dribble it up the floor, just grab the ball. But it was still a great shot on the other end. Timeout. Indiana leads it by nine. Only 1.02 left. Indiana has built their lead up to nine points. 102 left. Antonio Smith for Michigan State has had a big game and mostly from the rebounding edge as he taps that one back in. Inbounds. Michigan State needs to score quickly. Klein, a three-pointer off. Collier brings down that rebound and protects. A foul called on Weathers. Good rebound by Jason Collier. Good defense by Indiana. You can see they really got after him right there. Andre Patterson got a hand in Klein's face. He's not able to knock down the three. I mean, Indiana's defense has not been that bad here in the second half. I'm sure coach would tell you it's not been very good, but the thing that's killed him is just the offensive rebounds. I mean, Michigan State will shoot the ball they miss, but then Smith is there to tap the ball in, or Garavaglia is there to tap it in, and Indiana just got to do a better job of getting after the ball on the board. 20 offensive rebounds now for Michigan State. Just it, kill you. And it will not get any easier at Wisconsin. They're a big, strong team with some good athletes inside. 25 now for Collier. And Indiana's moved up to 11 points. A drive. Patterson goes down. No call. Reed has it. And doesn't want to give it up. Reed and Guyton need to handle the ball the entire time here. Everybody else just stay away from it. Reed pass, go get it. There you go. That's what you want to do. Great mental game by Indiana. Michigan State never did get the lead. Cut it to one. And Indiana held on mentally tough. And they're going to pull this game out and go 1-0 in the Big Ten. Shot clock is at 10. Ray Weathers is really eyeing Burl Sell. I think he felt like he got bumped on the other end. Should have got the call. Three seconds, Patterson. Yes, the three-pointer by Andre Patterson. Eight seconds to go. Weathers all the way to the hoop. Layup is in. Two seconds. Inbounds pass, and that'll do it. Indiana has won their first Big Ten game of the season. Seven.
77-65. Bob Knight and Tom Izzo will meet as the players exchange congratulations. Time now for our key play of the game, sponsored by KeyBank. Key for a new America, the inbounds play. That you, Michigan State's are out of bounds. Yeah, you can see, and they just set, had a timeout right there. Coach Issa, Izzo had set up what he wanted. They come out, throw it right out of bounds. Tom Izzo congratulating Andre Patterson. Indiana wins it by 11. You're watching Big Ten Basketball on Creative Sports. Good night from Bloomington. It is a mysterious swamp of